Meet 87-year-old Paula Levin. Levin's had a difficult life. She survived a heart attack in her 60s, breast cancer in her 70s, and most notably, she survived the Holocaust as a child. Levin, who's Jewish, was 14 years old and living in Poland when the war broke out. I had a wonderful childhood. I, I, would, I would say privileged childhood. But uh, then all of a sudden, everything stopped, so. Levin's experiences could be added to a large database and summarized statistically, quantitatively. For example, each year 365,000 women suffer a heart attack, 227,000 are diagnosed with breast cancer, and it's estimated that only 5,000 Jewish teenagers in Poland, out of one million, survived the Holocaust. But for Dr. John Creswell, an applied research methodologist at the University of Nebraska, Neither life nor research is simply about numbers. There's stories to tell, and qualitative research focuses on such detail. Qualitative research now in the United States is becoming more and more accepted as a way of doing research. Quantitative gives us a large general surface picture. Qualitative gives us the in-depth picture. Now you've got to say that both pictures are probably valuable. During the war, Levin's father was separated from his family and eventually killed, but he had obtained false identities for his wife and child, and he persuaded a non-Jewish family in the community to introduce them to others as Christians. He had lots of Polish friends, and I knew how to, I used to go to church with them, and I used to go, you know, I, I, I knew how to play that role. So, uh, but it wasn't easy. This. Uh, was not that usual the way I survived with my mother because we were under assumed name. We played that for two and a half years. The mailmen in that town in Poland wore uniforms. Every time the mail, the mailman would come, I, I was sure that somebody's coming to get us, you know. It's, uh, it was a constant fear, constant fear, nonstop. You'd be able to hear the tone of their voice. You'd be able to feel the emotion of, of the experience. Those are all rich details. You'd never get that in quantitative research. Studying Holocaust survivors and other very small populations present challenges. Small sample sizes are definitely something pushing people towards more qualitative means of gathering data. Research used to be just ad advancing our knowledge or testing our theories. Now we've got a whole different set of reasons for doing research. It may be to lift up the voices of people that haven't been heard. That may be just as important to have their voice heard as advanced knowledge. We asked Creswell to watch a portion of an interview Levin did with the Shoah Foundation in 1996 and to suggest how a qualitative researcher might compare these two interviews done 16 years apart. I would probably get a transcript of exactly what she said. I would then go through and start coding that to see what were some reoccurring themes that she might have talked about. My mother didn't like anything being handed to her. You know, she just wanted to be independent more. She was very strong and very life smart because she always used to say she lived through the First World War. So she, she was much more aware of things to come and people like us, my husband and I, probably should never have had children. Because after the war, after all what's happened to us, I don't think that we were qualified uh, you know, to be parents. So at times, obviously I'm very grateful and uh, and I'm happy most of the time, but you know, you can help go, you know, when you go through what I went through, you know, to think that way sometimes. They had two children, each of whom became a psychotherapist, and four grandchildren, each of whom was very close to their grandparents. Levin has been widowed since 1995. And in 2001, Levin returned to her hometown in Poland for the first time since the war and had an emotional reunion with the daughter from the family that had helped her to live as a Christian. Levin had kept this childhood photo of her friend. I love using pictures in qualitative research. Pictures in qualitative research are what we call devices to elicit comments. The value of qualitative is 
It's being able to get that detailed perspective. And then when you talk to several Holocaust survivors, now you have multiple perspectives. Creswell, it should be emphasized, is not at all opposed to quantitative research. In fact, he's pioneered a combination of qualitative and quantitative fields called mixed methods. And baseball, surprising as it may seem, is one good way of illustrating mixed methods in everyday life. We get the quantitative measures, statistics, from Pittsburgh Pirates play-by-play -play announcer Greg Brown. 35-year-old Jason Grilly ended up making 28 appearances with the Bucks at a 2.48 ERA and in 33 innings struck out 37 batters. But now consider New York Mets starting pitcher R.A. Dickey. He's 38 years old, he salvaged his career by learning to throw a knuckleball, and midway through the 2012 season, he was the only major league starting pitcher regularly throwing it. Pirate color analyst and former pitcher Steve Blass gives some qualitative input. People ask why don't more pitchers use it? Because it's not that easy a pitch to master, both in making it do what it's supposed to do and then throwing it for strikes if you do make it dance. Why did they put two commentators in that booth telling those different stories? Obviously, one story by itself would not give you the entire picture. See the fingernails in the ball, and you'll see the ball coming in, and that looks a lot straighter than it was. Sports has been doing mixed methods for years, and now research has just caught up. I've always argued that the best researchers in our world are those that have a pretty large toolkit of approaches for understanding problems. And the strategies in the toolbox are being used widely, everywhere from healthcare to social sciences to education settings. And the belief is that mixed methods approaches will become dominant in the years to come.